Okay, hello. Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to say thanks for this conference. It's my first time and has been really cool to be here and yeah, share the, this experience. Uh, I don't know if you were in the talk from illustration to animation by Nacho Arjona. Um, he made this joke about nachos and uh, I made the same joke in my presentation because I'm, <laughs> I'm also called Nacho, uh, actually Ignacio, but in Spain is the same name. So yeah, uh, I study theoretical physics, um, but I never had the chance to actually go into that field because uh, I discovered Blender and that kind of moved me away from that. Well, um, I have a YouTube channel, kind of, well, that's my cat, not my YouTube channel. Well, I also have a cat <laughs> uh, that is very cute. And that's my YouTube channel, um, where I upload some of my stuff. I like to work with procedural stuff. So yeah, I make some nice stuff with uh, geometry nodes. This is like a brush that I made procedurally. Uh, it's a very short video, I'm sorry. And also I made some more disgusting stuff that I like. It's like shader procedurally. Uh, okay, so today I'm here to talk to you about ship dynamics without fluid simulations. It's not the most interesting topic, but uh, yeah, maybe you enjoy it and my Hispanic accent might help through it. So, okay. Um, why did I get into this? Uh, when I was studying my bachelor in physics, uh, I was kind of unmotivated in the last year. Uh, so it was COVID, lockdown and stuff. And I was seeing all the possible topics that I could choose. And all of them were like really, really tough. Like, I don't know, like uh, quantum field theory, bosons, stuff like that. And I was not in the mood to to get into dedicating six months of my life of that. And then I found like one of the possible theses that was um, animating a ship moving in the ocean. And I was like, well, that seems a little bit easier. At least I understand what he's saying. So yeah, that's how I get into that. Um, I then I have like some conversations with my thesis supervisor, all my teachers and stuff. They show me what we, how we were going to face the problem and yeah, how it's going to be. And then they showed me the software that we were going to use to animate. Uh, and it would look something like this. So yeah, I was not in like a 3D and stuff by then, but I knew that this was looking really bad and I didn't want to have something like this. So I did a little bit of research on which software I could use to improve this. I went to Maya, Cinema 4D, also Houdini, and then I found Blender, uh, and it was free, all this community with all these tutorials that I know that they were going to help, and um, yeah, uh, also with animation notes by then that were that could make all these solvers for physics, so yeah, I proposed them to do it in Blender instead, and they let me do it, so yeah. Now, uh, why without fluid simulations? Why did I decide to go through the process without a proper fluid simulation. Um, well, it's not that I have anything against fluid sims. I think that they are really cool if you know how to do them. They are, um, yeah, a little bit time consuming, but anyway. But I feel that if you can find a way to get a similar result in a different way, um, yeah, maybe it's worth it to give it a try. Um, I don't know if you have seen this procedural river that they have done with geometry nodes. Uh, yeah, so I think that if you can get that through geometry nodes instead of through like a proper fluid scene with the river that might be a mess to do, well, that's more, that might be better. So um, now I wanted just to go briefly through what is a fluid sim, uh, what is like the physics behind it. So uh, yeah, it's kind of like we can know, we, we can understand what is behind there and why it's so intense. So. Uh, we have, well, this is Mid Journey. I put just some pictures of Mid Journey if you feel that they are kind of weird. Um, so we have an, a fluid, and uh, we want to know how it's going to move. Uh, physically, we will apply the Navier Stokes equation that is there. I don't know if you are familiar with this 
mathematical notations. But basically, it's going to tell you how the pressure of the fluid is going to change in space and time. Um, the pressure is this thing that when you dive, it hurts your ears. So yeah, it's going to tell you how it changes. Um, then when you have that, you have everything that you need. Then you can calculate the force that this fluid would act uh, or exert, I don't know if you, the word is exert, on any type of object like a boat. Uh, okay. Well, so problems of this way of facing the problem is that these equations are really difficult to solve in paper. I mean, uh, so this means exactly. Uh, it's actually one of the seven millennium price problems. So these are like seven mathematical problems that if someone solved them, um, they will get like a million euros and also like I think fame and glory for all your life. Uh, exactly, you need to prove either that the smooth globally defined solution exists that meets certain conditions or that they do not always exist and the equations break down. I don't know if, I don't really know what is the meaning of this phrase, but you can see that this kind of like a really hard problem. Also for practical, if you wanna, if you are a 3D artist and you wanna go through fluid seams, going through the exact solutions is not the best way. So what we do is we uh, discretize the space. We don't think about the space as an infinite number of points. We just think about like a grid that when you make a fluid seam, there is always like a grid that appears there. So yeah, uh, once that you do that, you can actually compute this stuff and you can have, yeah, like a fluid seam working. And then if you wanna also calculate uh, how much this fluid is acting on an object, so the pressure, how it's affecting it, you can't also think about the object as a real object, like this means like made by infinite numbers of atoms, well, not infinite, but a lot of atoms. Uh, so you need to simplify the object. In 3D, we always do that, right? Because you need to create an object made of faces. So a face is a simplification of how the reality is. Once that you have this, you can um, uh, really uh, uh, make the computations uh, more efficient. Uh, yeah, and here is like a little preview of what you will have, right? It's like all these like forces on each, each uh, face of the object. By the way, this is always perpendicular to the normal. And, and yeah, then when you have all the forces, you can add them and you know how is the global um, effect on the object. Cool. Um, well, uh, as far as I know, Blender doesn't let you do um, a fluid affecting a, a rigid body. So if you drop something on a fluid, you can make it like a collision. So it will like make splashes and stuff on the fluid, but the rigid body, go, rigid body would go through it without changing anything. But Houdini lets you do it. So I imported Susan there and I made a little try and you can see that definitely gets uh, some reaction and it looks good. But yeah, then it wants to come back home. <laughs> so, okay. Pros and cons of this method. Uh, well, the pros is obviously having a high resolution fluid working physically based can be super cool. Um, but then, uh, well, then also you have the interaction and stuff, but yeah, then can be really expensive. Have here like an example uh, from Vini that is over there uh, of like one of these fluid seams. It's done in Blender, so it doesn't have the rigid body stuff. But yeah, I think that it took like 12 hours to render, uh, to cast, 12 hours to render. And he sent me the file, it was like version five. So he went through this at least five times, right? Okay, so I assume it was not very <laughs> a straightforward process. But it looks really good if, if you wanna yeah, follow this path. Um, okay, so now, another way of having like a boat reacting to water uh, is cheating it. Here I have like a video of how you can do it. You can just take um, a point on the ocean, then you copy the position of your object there so it will follow it, and then you can add some noise and uh, some, uh, yeah, like some noise in the location, in the rotation. So at the end, it will look like it's uh, floating. Well, here is me just having a little bit of OCD with how I organize the notes. But uh, yeah, at the end, it looks that it's floating. 
Mm hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So it kind of works. Uh, very easy. There is a nice tutorial about this by Pixel3D. He does it in a different way, not with geometry nodes. But yeah, uh, you can check it out. So pros and cons of this method. Pros is quick and easy. Uh, and cons is not physically based. Might need tweaking because yeah, you put some noise, so might do something that looks like it like, can look weird. And there is no interaction between the object and the fluid, so there is no splashes and stuff like that. But you can always add some dynamic paint compositing or maybe some metaballs going around there um, and can look better. Okay, so now um, my approach was not using this cheating method, but just simplifying the fluid simulation. Um, what I mean with this is like, well, and there was this guy, I don't know if you recognize him, uh, he's Archimedes, um, and he made this like principle that uh, is like the upward buoyant force that is exerted on a body immersed in a fluid, whether fully or partially, is equal to the weight of the, of the fluid that the body displays. So this means that we can substitute this, all these forces acting of the, on the surface of the boat, um, and also all the fluid seem by just one operation that is calculating the volume of the object under the water, just calculating the weight of the, the water that would be there, and that's the force that is upwards. So yeah, that's definitely efficient. Um, pros of this method is physically based, it's quick, it's adaptable, can work in every situation, but again, there is no interaction object fluid, there is no splashes and particles, but yeah, as I said, can be always... Uh, Faked. Okay, so uh, at this point uh, of my um, thesis, I was feeling really good. I was like, well, I find a way to do it. It's going to work really good. Um, and then yeah, I also was kind of thinking that I was the only one that thought about this, uh, a little bit naive. And yeah, and then I saw this in uh, GTA 5. And yeah, definitely this was a simulation. It's physically based and it's working in real time because it's a video game. So, yeah, I uh, kind of decided to research how the people in uh, game development would go through that problem, and I found this article called Water Interaction Model for Boats in Video Games that basically explains you how to create a solver in, for real time of, like, in boats in video games. I learned a lot, a lot from it, and then it kind of changed the perspective of this problem uh, from kind of just doing whatever I could to making a, like a real-time solver in Blender kind of video game style. Um, okay, so now uh, I just wanted to introduce you of how the, like the physics behind the method and how to implement them in Blender. In particular with geometry nodes, not everything, but almost everything. Okay. So, ah, yeah, uh, so if you were bored before, now you are going to be much bored because it's just like raw, rigid body physics. So, sorry about that. Okay, so, uh, movement of a rigid body. A rigid body is kind of easy, it's not like a soft body. Um, uh, because, like, yeah, like the distance between the points of the object are always constant. In a soft body, they change, so you need much more variables. So, uh, you will have translation and rotation. So you can, have, you, you can have an object translating, then rotating, and then the combination of both. You know about this, like this is like animation. Uh, but for simulation, this is nice because we can separate the two problems and treat them as separate pieces. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. Uh, for the translation, an object moves because there are forces acting on them. If there are not forces, things don't move. You have like a pen, you drop it, it falls because there is the gravity, right? If I push the computer, it will move because I'm pushing it. So the force is a vector, and if you have the vector, you have the movement. Here I have an example, just the force is the arrow, and the, yeah, it's just because of that, the object will move, and you can solve the equations, and it's like a straightforward process. And there are three types of forces that can act on a boat. One is the weight of the boat, obviously. The other one is the friction with the water. 
uh, and the other one is the buoyant force, the Archimedes one. Um, the, two, the first two are straightforward. I'm not going to explain them, and I'm just going to go with the Archimedes one. So for Archimedes, we need the volume under the water. Uh, for calculating that, uh, we just need to know how much, like which part of the object is under the water, and this with geometry nodes is, is, is kind of easy to do. It's just a Rekas node. There is a part over there with the vector rotate that is just, uh, because if the object is going to be rotating the how it's called, the ray direction of the Rekas node needs to kind of balance to be always pointing in the global space upwards. So yeah, once that we ha uh, you have that, you need to calculate the actual volume of the object under the water. So uh, how I thought that I could do this was um, just going face by face and calculating the volume of the water that is just on top of that face. So that means that it's kind of like extrusion. Um, and yeah, then you just have the distance over there from the face to the surface, and then how much tilt there is on the face. So if the face would be like perpendicular to the water, there is no volume there. So you need to take that into account. And that's done with the cosine. So yeah, the volume would be the area of the face with the cosine of the tilt, and then the distance. And this again can be done in geometry nodes. <coughs> uh, you can see over there, the Raycast node that will calculate the distance from the face to the, um, to the water. And uh, that one is easy. And the other one, you just take, I don't know if you see from there. Yeah. Uh, you just multiplicate the face area, and then you just do like a dot product of the normal with the vertical direction. And yeah, you just then multiply both, then an attribute statistic to add all of them. So you have the total volume, and you just store the attribute, and then you have it there for forever, the volume. Um, yeah, here I have, now once that you have this, you can solve the equations. And here I have two examples with different parameters. This is without friction in the water. It's kind of weird, but this is how it would be if the water doesn't have friction, and then a little bit more realistic with friction. Doesn't look still very good, but yeah, you, can, you see that it's reacting at least to the water. Okay, now, um, for the rotation. The rotation is a little bit more tricky because you need more things. You need the forces, but that's nice because we already have them. And you need the point of application of the forces. Uh, so if I have here a pen, it's not the same if I apply a force here. It's not going to rotate. If I apply it here, it will rotate. So it's important to know which, where this force is applied. And that's what in physics we call a torque. You also then need to calculate the inertia of the object. This means it's not the same to rotate this pen like this than like this. This one is less, uh, like you need less force, to less torque to rotate it. Here there is like a video of a dedicated teacher explaining it. So when he's with the arms extended, he's rotating slower, and then he's with the arms like this, he's rotating slower because there is less inertia. Okay, so. Um, how we can calculate first the point of application, because the force we already have it. Uh, for doing that, we need to calculate the center of mass of the part of the boat that is sunken in the water. Uh, well, Blender, if you just right-click in the object, you can always set the origin to the, to the center of mass uh, or the surface, uh, so you don't go under these calculations. But what is behind is just like that formula over there that uh, what it's telling you is just like go through all the phases of the object and do an operation. The operation is multiply the position of that phase with the area and just then add them all and then divide by the total area. And doing that, you just have the center of, like the point of application or the center of mass. Again, this can be done in geometry nodes. Uh, the um, yellow part is just like you just take the phase area and attribute the statistic and you add all of them and you have it. And then uh, for the other part, uh, you have the over there the position. Again, you have to rotate it to have like some consistency with the global space. And you just scale that position with the face area, attribute the statistic to add them all, and that's all. Then you have the position of the, uh, yeah, of the center of mass of the sunken part. Cool. 
then for the inertia, um, it's like kind of like the same calculations, the same process, but instead of doing the operation of just the position of each area, you have to do that. That yeah, it's the same but with different numbers. And I'm not going to put it in geometry notes because it would be kind of like the same. If you have any questions, you can ask me and I will show you. Okay. Uh, here I have an example of uh, just the rotation, how we react to the water. Again, this depends on, on some parameters, so maybe it's moving a little bit more faster, but you can always tweak that. Uh, and here is, the, as I said before, the composition of both. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I explained how we how we get all the parameters. I didn't explain how we actually get the change of position of the object and the rotation in time. Um, that's done with that thing over there that is a differential equation. I don't know if you are familiar with that stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to solve this in geometry nodes. It's not possible because you need to loop and you, you need to store some variables. Would be really cool to have it there, maybe in the future. But yeah, for now, yes, you need to write a, a script to do it. It's not very complicated, but yeah, maybe one day the, everything is integrated and we can have solvers there. Okay, uh, now this last part, my presentation uh, is kind of a last moment. Um, I kind of finished it this morning, uh, so it's a still working process. <clears throat> and it's about, uh, well, I, my idea was, um, well, by the way, I did all this like two years ago in animation notes, and now I did it again in geometry notes. So, like, there are, like I faced this problem two times in different ways. Anyway, um, the idea was to have like a real time solver, like video game style, in Blender for boats in water. So, I was thinking, could be cool with Eevee, we will have also real time like rendering. Mm, and then they come up with this uh, real time compositor in Blender 3.4. So that was also a big thing because then you, I could have like the whole pack there in the viewport in real time. So I maybe went a little bit over, over the line with this. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to see this like BFX breakdown of uh, Black Saves. It's called the CV. I don't know if you have seen it. I haven't, but the BFX looks pretty good. And um, yeah, what is behind like a professional uh, simulation of a ship in the water. So we will have like a fluid sim. I'm not going to have that on EV because yeah, I, I'm using the Archimedes principle, not fluid sims. And then you have, well, obviously shaders, some rain overlay, backgrounds, volumetrics, color corrections, less distortion, etc. So yeah, uh, maybe I could try to have something like this on EV on real time. Obviously it's not going to look like this, but just kind of get inspired by it. So yeah, um, now I'm going to go to Blender and show you first the simulator uh, with some examples and then the real time EV thingy. Now is when Blender crashes and I'm Everything goes wrong, but yeah, okay. I need to change some stuff with the projector, so one second. Oh, I can't see my screen. Wait. Now, okay, good. Okay, so here is the simulator. I made it like a little bit uh, user-friendly there. Also, one thing of uh, f how I'm off on time, by the way. Okay, all good. Um, one thing that I hate about proper s solvers is that they have so many parameters. I don't know if you have been working with Houdini, but in Houdini you can have like a stiffness damping, but like seven times in the same solver. So it's like, what what is going on? So I just made two parameters that are like flotability, that is just how heavy is the object. If it's zero, it will kind of sunk, and if it's one, it will bounce away. And then the buoyancy, that is how much friction there is in the water, so how much kind of relax the movement. So, okay. So if I would click simulate, 
Well, it's not working in real time, I think. No, yeah, it is. Okay. So yeah, if you can see it, the cool thing about this is like I could also now, well, like, well, so I could play with it. So yeah, it's kind of working nice. I can also just do this ship to, to go away and it will fly. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's one. I'm going to show you some more. Here is Susan. Make ship. And yeah, well, now you see that it's sinking, so I will need to change the floatability a little bit up. So yeah, also the buoyancy, maybe. Another example here with this one. I wanted to make the donut of the Blender Guru, <laughs> but I didn't have time. <laughs> well, here you can see that the maybe needs a little bit more of mass, like we have of weight, but and also the buoyancy is too high, so maybe going with this down will make it. Okay, so yeah, this is like the solver. Um, now let's go to the real time EV thingy that I made. It's Blender, yeah, with Blender 3.4. And yeah, this is like real time in the viewport. I made this a little like very quickly, some compositing with some overlays. The rain overlay that I used was very crappy, so it looks really bad. I blur it a lot. But uh, yeah, uh, here you can see. Uh, may, some people here know much more about compositing than me. But yeah, it's kind of cool that you can now, well, in, when Blender 3.4 is around, that you can just play around in the viewport and just compose it, everything. Oh. I have your own scene there. Um, yeah, I, I still need to there is intersection between the boat and the water, so that's, that doesn't look very good. But yeah, uh, this is how it's working in Blender. And now I'm going to finish the extend. Oh, now you're not seeing the presentation. Maybe a problem. Well, uh, anyway, um, yeah, this is it, kind of. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>